Hello, hello. Good afternoon. Casey Durango, go Kisa, go Kita with Casey here. Sorry, I had to reboot. Um, again, this may be the last live stream I do from this old computer. It's getting kind of wonky on me. So sorry about that. And you've seen way too much of my kitchen, but there you go. Um, today's topic, as the title suggests, are is common questions about keto. Um, it, for those of you who don't know, the ketogenic protocol is one by whereby you reduce your carbohydrate intake <laughs> to a level sufficient um, where our liver stop pumping out glucose for fuel and our bodies happily um, turn over to burning fat or ketones for fuel. How do we do that? Pretty much something that will work for just about everybody is keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net carbs. Eat fatty sources of protein. If you want a, an, an actual accurate list from Dr. Eric Westman, page four, link below. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. So pretty straightforward, eh? But there's still a lot of questions. I am not a doctor, researcher, anything like that. I am a former fatty, and all I can do is share with you my experience and my understanding of the ketogenic protocol as I learned it and as I have lived it low these many six and a half years now. For those of you who don't know, I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the protocol, and it's uh, changed my life in, in just about every way. So common questions, and please feel free to jump in. I'm really sorry that you're seeing so much of my sink. I don't know why that is. I usually try to block that out. And here's my swivel arm of my faucet. One of the first questions that will happen is, how do I start? How do I start the protocol? Well, you start it by the next time you put food in your mouth, lay off the carbs. And that sounds really simplistic, but that is the answer. Lay off the carbs. Just cut out the carbs. You don't need to buy any special food. You certainly do not need to buy potions and powders and pills and shakes and kits. Just lay off the carbs. Our bodies will do the rest. Our bodies know perfectly what to do when we reduce our carbohydrate intake. Um, another common question is, but what about how much fat am I supposed to eat? I'm going to repeat the protocol. Keep carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day total, not net. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. There's no mention of grams of anything other than grams of carbohydrate. How much protein do we need? That is extremely varied. It depends on our gender, our age, our body composition, our um, activity level, what type of activities, our stage of life. So there is no one answer. It, even when there's a formula for it, it is so broad as to be, I think, almost useless. It's something like 1.5 to 2.5 grams of protein for every kilogram of reference weight. What is reference weight? That is what we should weigh. That's what our, our bones and our blood vessels and all of our tissue and our lean mass not counting all the body fat that, you know, excess body fat. So, you know, I'm not sure we know that, but 1.5 to 2.5 grams of protein is a, that's a, it's like a 30%, was more than that. It's, it's like a 50% variance. So even the formula is way off. So we don't have to get in the protein. We don't have to certainly get in the fat. It's not the presence of the fat that matters. It's the absence of the carbs. If you can eat only one thing, if you're on a desert island, find a source of protein because while carbohydrate is not an essential macronutrient, it simply is not, meaning we don't have to consume carbohydrate to get whatever byproducts of consuming carbohydrate our body uses because our bodies can make its own glucose and it's, it's need-based. It's as you need it, our body will create it, assuming, you know, we are everything's functioning. There's no weird problem going on. But assuming you don't have a rare condition, 
you can create your own glucose. Protein and fat are essential macronutrients, which means the amino acids that are in fat and protein, we must consume for cell health. It's, it's all the way down to the cell level. But don't worry about how much protein you need to eat. We tend to not feel particularly well if we overeat protein. We can feel kind of logy. And the fat we eat is quite satisfying. It's not a protocol of high fat. It's only high fat compared to not being low fat. Protein will tend to stay stable no matter what nutrition protocol you are on because that's just what we do. But if you, if you cut down the carbs, the rest is fat. It's not added fat. It's not fat bombs. It's not a bunch of bulletproof coffee. I'll get the question, I don't like all that oily coffee. Don't drink it. It's not even part of the protocol. MCT oil is not on the food list. Coconut oil, I don't believe, is on the food list unless it's for sautéing. Nuts, not on the food list. Why? Nuts are supposed to be healthy for us. Well, they also told us that vegetables could be eaten in vast quantities, unlimited quantities. No, that's where all the carbs come from. This is another question. Do you count the carbs in the vegetables? Yes, you count all the carbs. Most, uh, just about the only place I get carbs, it would be vegetables, and I don't eat many of those. So I'm on a very low carb on any given day. It's quite low. I'm probably sub eight or 10 grams of carbohydrate because I just, I just don't eat a lot of vegetables. Neither does my husband at this point. We have some. We don't, we like vegetables. We just prefer to eat, fill up on the more nutritious food, which happens to be the fatty sources of protein. So where do you get the fat if you're not drinking bulletproof coffee? Eat the fat that comes with the protein. Eat the skin with the poultry. Eat the eggs with the yolks. Eat the, the ground beef with the fat. Eat the steak with the fat. Eat the pork chop with the fat. You get the idea. Um, what's another big, oh, won't all that fat kill you? No, it's not, that's not the way it works. That was, that was old stinking thinking. The old um, cholesterol, overall cholesterol number indicating high saturated fat or anything else that's bad in that will kill you. No, it's just wrong. It was just bad science and a little bit of politics thrown in. And, um, you know, a little bit of the Midwest states that grow a lot of grain really want us to eat a lot of grain, understandably. That's what they want, but that doesn't mean we need to do it. What is a carbohydrate? Common question. It's kind of anything that is not an animal product. There are carbohydrate, fat, and protein in anything we consume, but for the most part, there's very little carbohydrate in animal products, and there's very little protein and fat in plant products. So the majority, if you eat about, okay, how many vegetables? I thought they were unlimited. No. About a cup a day of non-starchy vegetables, if you don't have a measuring cup, imagine the size of your fist, of pre-cooked of non-starchy vegetables. About two cups or about the size of two fists of leafy greens, maximum a day. Those are maximums. The cuckoo is way off. We are having clock issues in my house. Grandmother clock, I backed it up by pulling one of the weights too hard, and so the, the Gonger, it gongs on the hour, it's all jacked up. That was my bad. And then Cuckoo only has one hand, so it's hard to reset it. I have to kind of guess and then adjust the pendulum. It's, a, it's an ongoing thing. Anywho, what was I saying? Oh, so that's maximum carb um, vegetables, not minimums. There is no minimum. Zero is the minimum. You can eat zero. But if you do that about a cup a day of non-starchy vegetables and about two cups a day of leafy greens, that'll get you to about 10 or 12 grams of carbohydrate right there. So there you go. Um, how, did, how did someone arrive at 20 grams a day? How did I learn about doing this? I had given up on losing weight. You can see it in my blog, my before photos. I was morbidly obese for 30 years, from my mid-20s to my mid-50s. I am now 62. I started this when I was 55. I had given up on losing weight. I simply did not want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes, and I knew that I was on the road to that. And I was on the road to 
hypertension and all sorts. And I already felt badly, physically badly. My joints hurt. My body ached. I couldn't move easily through space. I'm 5'1". And I'm actually 115 and a half pounds off my heaviest weight. So imagine how much weight that is on a small frame. And I just was miserable. Some people are so happy in their bodies, no matter their size. I was not one of those people. And I'm all about body positivity. I just was not positive about my body. And I was not happy inside my brain. And I was chronically depressed and clinically depressed for a long time. Not every single day, but you don't have to be depressed every single day for it to be impacting your life. So how did, how did I do this? I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I came across the famous white coat video featuring Dr. Eric Westman talking to some of his clinic patients. It was not for a YouTube video. He's not selling any product to the camera. He's not, he was just a, uh, one of his grad students stuck a camera in the corner of the clinic room. They put it on Duke University's intro web and then it made it out into the wild. And the the protocol was, you know, keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Don't worry about the fat. Don't worry about this. You're taking insulin for di type 2 diabetes. You know, I must adjust that today. If you're under, if you're taking medication for type 2 diabetes, do this under doctor's supervision. This is me talking, but that's because I know this from him. By the way, as an aside, if you want to ask Dr. Westman questions, because believe it or not, he knows at least as much about this topic as I do. Clearly, he knows everything about this topic. Um, we are we have started having the Durham support greetings that we're he's been holding every um, every month for about ten years, I think. Um, they can't do them in person anymore, so we've started doing them virtually. And here's a link to it. It's a registered event, but you can ask your questions. It's not on YouTube. It's on Crowdcast. You can ask your questions in advance. And I would take advantage of that opportunity to ask the world expert on the clinical implementation for treating obesity and type 2 diabetes questions. Another question, won't it ruin my cholesterol? Won't it make it go sky high? The overall cholesterol number is kind of useless. It's not, you know, when you get that overall one number from the doctor, it's not like they went in and counted cholesterol particles in your blood and gave you a number. And first of all, every cell in the human body requires cholesterol. Cholesterol is necessary and it can be protective for the brain against dementia and Alzheimer's. And the components of cholesterol, there are several components of cholesterol, all of which serve a function. You know, nature didn't just throw cholesterol in our cells to, you know, make Pfizer's stock go up. It's required. What you want to look at instead of the overall cholesterol number is your triglyceride, which we want to be as low as possible in relation to our HDL, which we'd like to be as high as possible. A great thing is if your triglycerides and your HDL are the same. So if one is 67 and the other one is 67, great. Think of triglyceride as inflammatory and HDL is anti-inflammatory, if you want to look at it that way, you want a little inflammation in your body. It helps fight off disease. It helps wounds heal. You know, when you cut yourself, it goes over and does all this clotting, it gets kind of inflamed and red, but that's a good thing, as long as it's not infected. You want, you want anti-inflammatory because you don't want everything catching fire. Think, it of, think of it as this way. Campfires, good. Forest fires, bad. So we want a little campfire going. Those are the numbers you want to pay attention to. LDL is not very important. Um, if you go to cardiovascular risk, CV risk, CV, CV risk dot net or dot org, cardiovascular risk, it's a risk calculator. They don't even ask what your LDL is. They ask your age, your weight, um, some other things. Do you smoke? So there's that. No. Hey, ketogenic. Um, I'm looking to see, therefore, Dr. Westman's total carbs. Okay, so you guys, I really like that you answer each other's questions. Um, Carmen asked, does anyone know why she's not doing net carbs? Because I followed Dr. As has been answered, I followed Dr. Westman's carbs. You know what net carbs is? It's just eating more carbs. That's what it is. Food manufacturers love to quote net carbs because they 
are getting away with subtracting fiber grams. And there's not good science behind the fact that fiber is not absorbed into the body and has no impact. At, there might be for some people and some foods, but food manufacturers love it. See, food manufacturers, if you're going to have a product that needs to have shelf life, you need stabilizers in there. So that comes from, that comes from carby things. We all know the story about the Twinkie. It's like 60 year old Twinkie. And it's the same the day they opened it as it was manufactured. Very long shelf life. You know what doesn't have such a long shelf life? A pork chop. If it's frozen, fine, but think of it this way. There are no stabilizers in pork. You either keep it, you keep it frozen or you eat it. Not so with um, packaged goods, even if they, and by the way, keto is a non-regulated term. Someone shared with me in the Patreon group. I will give a little plug for Patreon. I have a private Patreon support group. And with that, I do about 20 videos a month. And going up from there, about a half dozen patron-only live streams like this on Crowdcast a month, about half a dozen video group sessions a month on Zoom, and monthly one-on-ones, depending. Plus access to a secret hidden Facebook group. So someone said that on um, yesterday's live stream that they were in Costco and there was a keto in a store, keto bread, keto bread, which you could, uh, you know, keto bread. She looked at it, it was 14 grams per slice of carbohydrate. That is just not worth it. Ana Martinez writes, I have the best sleep now that I'm doing keto. I love it. Carmen writes, always learning something new. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Some of it well-intentioned, if misinformed. Some of it not so well-intentioned. Some of it designed to encourage you to buy a product. To you know, Some people want this to be difficult, complicated, so that they can sell you something that makes it seem easier. How do you start the protocol? The next time you eat food, lay off the carbs. The next time you eat after that, same thing. So another question, so what can I eat? Everything else. Don't go for the low fat stuff. Now, many items are not unlimited. Full fat dairy, totally acceptable, but it's not unlimited. How many calories should I eat a day? That depends on your body. Don't let an app tell you what to eat. Don't let a talking head tell you how much to eat. Um, don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. So that'll tell you. And if you listen, now that's the hardest part, no doubt. The getting out of the habit of eating, that's hard. We are habituated to eating. Another question, how do you deal with cravings? Well, here's my advice is don't feed the craving because if you feed the craving, it's like having a stray cat. You're going to, the cat's going to keep coming back. I say this knowing because we have a cat that has lived on and near our side porch for 17 years because we fed her one time. 17 years. And she looks rough. <laughs> But she likes it outdoors and she doesn't stray. She just hangs out there. But if you feed a craving, you're just going to keep getting them. You know what you do is you, you recognize that a craving is not going to kill you. It's not a life emergency. What do we tell people who maybe have a craving for something that is really obviously bad for them? Do we encourage them to, to give in to the craving? No, we encourage them to avoid it. But I really, really, really really wanted the cigarette. Well, okay, I understand you have a craving, but you're trying to quit smoking, correct? So what you do with cravings is you employ tools and, and new habits to get through. The craving will pass. Now, here's a pro tip. I, I don't, this is not an issue for me. The food it has not been an issue for me since the first day because I was in such a miserable state. I knew since 1977, low carb worked for me. I just, like many of us, told myself, well, I can't, that's fine, but I can't go the rest of my life without eating tortilla chips or pizza. 
and I couldn't go without them until I did. And now I have no interest. It passes, right? Something I thought I couldn't go without, I don't even, doesn't even enter my mind. And doesn't, the thought doesn't even appeal to me. If you look at how much beige food there is in the world, ugh. So um, I'm going to rattle off several questions and I appreciate particularly, uh, hey, Jenny, good to see you. Is your family still growing? Jacqueline Hitchin, hi, hi, hi. Um, Sean writes, I go many hours not eating and that was weird for me in the beginning. It is weird, Sean. I remember the first time I realized that it was like mid-afternoon and I hadn't thought about eating. What? When you're a sugar burner, about every two and a half hours, your brain is, is calling for more glucose. It's the way we're designed. Glucose is really supposed to be like emergency fuel. Except there's just, we don't have the emergencies now. I mean, we have emergencies, but they don't, we don't need glucose to fix them. As a matter of fact, there has never been a better time to get your blood sugar and your blood pressure under control than right now. There's pretty strong evidence that type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure and a couple of other, you know, some obviously COPD or asthma. If you have these conditions, you're at a greater risk for not having a good outcome if, God forbid, you are exposed to COVID-19. So try to stay healthy and, and stay strong. Oh, I was going to tell you the pro tip. Some people who get a little sweet craving, they counter it by eating a dill pickle or just a swig of pickle juice. Sometimes the tart and the tang helps, I guess, I don't know, maybe it reboots your taste buds. Um, thank you, Jen. Jen. Jen knows of what she speaks. Uh, she's writing, K night. some people can tolerate increasing carbs slightly for maintenance, some can't. You won't keep losing and waste away. You won't keep losing and waste away. Um, okay, so my husband started this about six months after I did. He never had a weight problem, ever. He had a little bit. He put on a little bit of weight after age 50. Um, he started doing this because he saw the benefits that I was enjoying. And it was life-changing for me and my mood. And I was happy and I got my brain back and all this. So I always like to say that between about, oh, I don't know, 8 p.m. one night and 7.30 a.m. the next morning, he dropped all the weight. He continues to eat this way. He is trim, fit, strong. He does not reintroduce carbs. He, can he always could tolerate more carbs than I, but they are not carby, carby, carbies. And he's from Columbia, South America where rice and beans and potatoes and everything else are an absolute staple. Um, so, excuse me, I was distracted. And so you don't have to worry about losing more. If you really are fearful of losing too much weight, you just, this is the one time you would increase dietary fat. If you're burning fat for fuel and you don't want to burn any more body fat, frankly, I've never met anyone who does not want to burn more body fat. My husband does not need to burn more, more body fat. He went, and went on a 35 mile bike ride this morning and he has not, you know, he's not carb loading. He hasn't done that in a long time, but I've got some fat bombs in the fridge for him because he's a fat burner. He doesn't need to lose any more body fat really. So that's when you add a little bit of dietary fat, but you're not piling on. It's just a little bit. So that's how you do that. And thank you for the question. It's a good question. Um, Hector, and Hector is always so good, full of good information. And I, I, you made me laugh out loud, Hector, when you responded to my question about your background. K Knight, best to maintain the protocol. Be sure to just eat enough for weight stability. That's it. I've been weight stable for three years. I would like to lose some more body fat, but I'm okay with where I am. This is another thing. Never thought I'd say that about myself out loud. I never even thought it about myself, but I'm okay. I like, I like how I am. And, you know, I wish I was less wrinkled. Um, I wish I was less crepey, but I'm 62. Be oh, skin. That's another big question. What do you do about sagging skin? 
if you lose a lot of weight. Um, I've done nothing about sagging skin. I don't really have hanging skin or sagging. I have, I have crepey skin. But if someone had told me that I was going to lose essentially 100 pounds, I, I would have thought, well, I need to start saving up for skin reduction or, or, or removal surgery. No. Um, I really chalked this up probably mostly to genetics, just dumb luck. Um, my mother had really good skin. And as I've said, so I might have gotten her skin, but I also got her cankles. So there's the trade-off. I also was a normal loser. I lost 47 pounds the first year and was thrilled with it. And that's not a slow loser. That's a normal loser. So I lost on average less than a pound a week. And over the course of two more years, I lost the next 50 pounds. So I was a gradual loser. So what do you do about skin? Um, I don't do much, <laughs> honestly. I ha oh, what about exercise? I have just gotten the total gym out of the closet where it lived for three years and have started doing just very simple, straightforward exercises five days a week. I do five exercises per muscle group or movement group. And every day I do ab crunch. Every day I do ab crunches. And I've just started doing that. It takes me about total, about 22 minutes to do it. And I break it up throughout the day. So I'm pretty pleased with my arms. And I have a bruise over here. But that is, uh, that was from working in the yard. It was a big bruise. It was a hematoma, says my friend Michelle. Hey, Pamela. Pamela writes, back on track after gaining 11 pounds during lockdown. So not worth it. Back on track and feeling so much better. 35 pounds to go. To go. You know, and being on lockdown... You know, if hunger is not the problem, and we know this, Pamela knows this, food is not the answer. Food does not help boredom. It we, does in that it takes up time. Better to get a jigsaw puzzle or paint by numbers or clear out your sock drawer. But food's not going to help. Food is not going to help anxiety. Food is not a de-stressor. It is the stressor for many of us. Um... I am scrolling down. Yes, Hector writes, Steve, Dr. Stephen Finney does have good information. And he pretty much, and that's where I got it, um, is if you, if you need more energy and you don't want to lose any more weight or body fat, this is when you add dietary fat. That's it. Because if you start eating carbs, yeah, you'll put on weight. You'll stop losing weight. But also your blood sugar might get jacked up. Your insulin might get jacked up. Your inflammation might come back. You know, I need to put you on the payroll. Jen, you are doing great at fielding these questions. Berinda Blanco. Hi, will not, hi, will not eating breakfast put my thyroid at risk? I do have the page four, but it is just over a year old. Is there a new version? If you got the one that's copywritten from Dr. Westman, then I don't know. He might have added some medical information about make sure you do this under a doctor's supervision. No. Thyroid, skipping breakfast, eating breakfast, does it help your thyroid? Let's ask the other question. Why would eating breakfast help your thyroid? People, well, when they start, there'll be a litany of fears. I can't do this. I don't have a gallbladder. I can't do this. Um, I'm hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I can't do this. Um, um, I'll get a kidney stone. I can't do this. I'm postmenopausal. I can't do this. I'm a young person trying to get pregnant. I can't do this. And just go right on down the list. To my knowledge, there is no medical condition and I've asked this question. I will be asking again, Dr. Westman, when we have the Durham support group meeting a week from Tuesday. Is there any medical condition for which this protocol is either contraindicated or will just absolutely interfere with success? I, I believe that steroid medications can make it more challenging. And thyroid medications are, I mean, people who have thyroid issues, it's very tricky. My understanding, I don't have that, but I know people with thyroid conditions and trying to get the, that balance right with the meds can be um, alarming. Skipping breakfast, 
don't eat if you're not hungry, no matter what the clock says. Arbitrarily eating because it's X o'clock does not make any more sense to me than not eating if you're actually hungry, no matter what the clock says. Kenna, hi, watching from Ghana, West Africa. That's fantastic. I've reversed my type 2 diabetes with an A1C of 5.6, and I've lost 37 pounds. That's fantastic. <laughs> Pamela Hunt writes, I'm an artist, and I finally realized that I'm better off in the studio, not the kitchen. LOL. Excellent. Hey, Heather. I weigh 13 pounds less than the weight on my driver's license. Never even thought I would ever get down to the number and put on my license. This works. This is the bottom line. This works. It's not a gimmick. It's not a fad. This is the way we were designed to eat. Dr. Eric Westman didn't make it up. He learned it from Jackie Eberstein and Robert Atkins. By the way, I might be having a, a, an online event with Jackie Eberstein, a Q&A. And she's the world expert on hormones, thyroid, fertility issues, childhood issues, issues about parents' nutrition on the fetus, even before you conceive. Nancy writes, finally graduated to no blood pressure meds. That's huge for me. 20 plus years on blood pressure meds, down 125 and off the meds at 70. Listen to that. You've lost 125 pounds or you're down to 125. Either way. And you're 70. Okay, I can't do this. I'm too old. No, that's people telling us what we couldn't do. Doctors. The media, if you haven't lost weight by 45, it's your chances are very bad that you ever will. You can lose the weight, but the, you know, you're know you going to put it all back on. Really? Not if I just lay off the carbs. I've been weight stable for now over three years. And I've been doing this for six and a half years. Don't tell me it's not sustainable. You know what's not sustainable? is trying to force my body to spend more calories and eating fewer of them. That's what's not sustainable because you're hungry all the time and you're sore and you're unhappy and you feel like a failure. This is sustainable. <laughs> Kenner writes, thanks, ketogenic. I've been in shock. Sometimes I feel like an imposter in my own health. I feel really good. It is hard to get used to the new, to the new us, isn't it? That's actually a thing, you know, uh, a, a big thing that we, we've talked about in, in uh, the Patreon group is how it's hard to get away from buying clothes that are size 3X or 24W. I started off in 24W jeans from Costco. I went all the way down every single size as I was doing this and not super, super fast. I mean, this was a gradual process. The last pair I bought was the smallest they had, size six. And I generally wear a six, sometimes a six petite in other clothes. I get, I, I don't buy most of my clothes at Costco anymore. And I'll get them at Stitch Fix. And I was amazed. And, but it felt so weird. I'll still hold up. I'll be doing laundry and I'll hold up some of my clothes. I said, this can't fit me. But it does. We just have to get used to it. And it, you can feel like an imposter in your own body. Lost 125 pounds, right? Nancy. And thank you, Jen. Yeah, I'm going to have to compensate you, Jen, for monitoring these questions for me. Um, Sean Sandridge writes, your videos encouraged me to lose weight at 50. Like you, I did the marathons. I've always been active, gained weight after I retired from the military, even though I worked out like a mad woman. You can't outrun bad nutrition. You just can't. You, exercise is great for body composition, for core strength, for bone density, which is why I'm doing it. And I want to be strong. If I'm going to live for another 30 years, oh, by the way, my pink drink, what am I drinking? Usually someone is asked by this time and maybe someone has. Tall glass, full of ice, mostly full of diet tonic water, a splash of diet cranberry and a squeeze of lime. Hashtag Casey's pink drink. When I talk a lot, it helps keep my whistle wet. I do have the real page four. Thanks for responding to my question. Love your channel. Thank you, Brenda. Um, Laura Rios writes, Casey, I've lost 70 pounds in keto and now my kids think I'm too skinny that I should stop. 
They don't understand. This is my new life now. How do I put their mind to rest? Well, you know, um, sometimes other... Oh, this camera's really distorted, isn't it? I apologize. I don't know what the setting is, and I am going to... I bought a new computer yesterday. I just... I was irritated at having to buy a new one. I haven't even taken it out of the box. I got as much joy out of getting the new computer as I would, you know, buying a new water heater or replacing the axle on my car. Not fun. But anyway, this computer is having issues. Um, how, you can't put someone else's mind at rest other than say, I'm fine. My health markers are great. And did were they worried about your health, health 70 pounds ago? Um, I don't know your situation. Is it possible your children could stand to lose a little bit of weight as well? Very often when, when people say you've lost enough weight, now you're stuck. Are you having an eating disorder? It's because they really don't, are not at their best. They're not at their peak performance or their optimal health. And some people can feel like it's a riff. That's Jack in the background drinking. I'm sorry. That's distracting. Um, Jack, my dog, by the way. Sometimes people feel like our success reflects poorly on them, which it doesn't. We're all, we're all on our own path. And this is not the only way for people to be successful. There are many paths that lead to the same destination. But for me, this is what worked. And I tried everything. Well, I didn't try everything. I did not do Weight Watchers because I'm too frugal. Plus, I was not about to weigh in in front of other people. Nobody. I don't even like the nurse at my doctor's office seeing what I weigh. Okay. Um, Sean. <laughs> there's Jack. D disagreeing with someone on the street. Try page. I don't feel crazy. I said, that's a benefit. Rosalind Trimble. I feel kind of resentful that I paid so much money for different weight programs. Only to find out that the solution is simple. Cut the carbs. I've had people who have asked me, like, because I, I do one-on-one -on -one stuff. And they've had success. You know, after about the first 50 pounds, I say, wait, are you going to tell me that this was always available and nobody told me about it? My doctor, you know, I've been taken to diet doctors since I was 10 and no one even told me this was an option. Yeah. Even now, some doctors are afraid to recommend it. They're afraid they're going against the standard of care. And sorry about the dog barking like television. Oh, well. He's a good boy, though. And Nancy writes, I agree, Rosalind. Paid way too much to lose weight, and it just it's just common sense. And you don't have to pay anybody anything. You do not need to purchase one product to be 100% successful at this. You don't need a kit. You don't need to buy a meal plan. You know what, you know what to eat. Just leave off the carbs. The food is... Straight up simple. It's the daily implementation. Like I said, not eating if you're not hungry, more of a challenge. We have to get used to what hunger is. The first twinge of peckishness, you don't have to, you don't have to eat immediately. Um, our friend Michelle, a patron, who is brilliant, um, I, we were talking about peckishness. So I'm peckish right now. I could eat, but I'm not hungry, and I'll stay this level for hours. And I ate a decent plate of fuel this morning. My husband went on this 35 mile bike ride. He was gone when I got up. I thought, you know what? Cyclists get pancakes. So I made keto pancakes. And they're just cream cheese and egg and a little splenda and some vanilla and a little bit of cinnamon. And so I made, you know, sausage patty and I had some too. And it was delish. And I was ready to eat. But anyway, peckish does not mean you need to eat right away. And Michelle did the analogy it's like when the fuel light comes on in your car. It doesn't mean go veering off the highway immediately in the desperate search for gasoline. It's like, okay, probably another 60 miles, you're, you're going to need gas. So just be on the lookout. Be ready. So I thought that was very smart of her. My patrons are the smartest. Ketogenic writes, Rosalind, I know, right? And then they say it's your fault that it didn't work. Yeah, that's brilliant. You, you could always put it on you. Okay. Also, so you don't need to buy anything. I hope you realize that like I have merch, I think that goes below here and I sell mugs and t-shirts. You don't need to buy those to be hundred percent successful. They just help 
that kind of helps me with things like when I need to buy a new computer so that I can do more live streams. Although that's a whole lot of t-shirts and mugs and <laughs> to be able to buy this computer. <clears throat> I was so irritated having to spend the money. Nancy writes, another benefit is no bugs in the pantry from storing all those carbs. Bugs love carbs. My pantry is empty of carbs, LOL. Awesome. I hadn't thought about that. Pamela writes, I promise I tried every diet ever. I'm 68 years old. Keto is the only one that has worked for me. Dr. Westman has been quoted as saying from one of his patients that Dr. Westman told this patient, I can guarantee that this will work. I just can't guarantee you'll do it. And keep in mind, the, you know, this will work. The this and that is keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total, not net. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Nothing about MCT oil. Nothing about time-restricted eating. Nothing about grams of anything other than carbs. Nothing about the M word. Call it the M word. The percentages. No, no percentages. That's another question. What do I do? I'm trying to get my M word component in, and I'm not hungry. And it's the end of the day. Don't eat. Just because some app says you should have X number of something, if you're not hungry, don't eat. Oh, Arlene Zalanka writes, when I drink water, I get a sweet taste in my mouth. What's up with that? I don't know. I've never heard that before. Ana Martinez writes, I noticed that I get a hunger pang, but then I do some housework or a workout and my energy is off the roof and the hunger goes away. And maybe it's not hunger. Remember that tummy growling is not hunger. It's, not, it's just a circadian rhythm reminding you that you usually eat. But maybe you are peckish. And, and maybe that's that. How do you stop the cravings? Uh, Jamie, I did address that before. You don't stop them. You just plow through them. Don't feed the craving or else it'll come back. The analogy I made was like a stray cat. You keep feeding a stray cat. Guess what? Stray cat comes back. So a, a craving is not an emergency. And I do like to go to the extremes. What if your life partner cheated on you? What? Well, I really had a craving for that other person. You would say, uh, well, deal with it. Suck it up, buttercup. You don't just give into a craving because you got one. So you just deal with it. You're not going to pass out. It's okay. There are a lot of things that we need to get through in life. We are getting through them now. Okay. Um, Zia Ziprin, is it possible to be successful at keto if you don't eat meat? For me, it would be a bigger challenge, but there are vegetarian people who have been successful. I recommend looking up a man named Jadeep Bhutta, J-A-Y-D-E-E-P-B-U-H-T-A, -E 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 I believe is the correct spelling. He is great. I've met him at several conferences. He's from India. He's a vegetarian by culture and religion, and he's lost a lot of weight. I think he's half his weight he's lost. So it is possible, just more challenging. Um, I don't really know. I can't speak to it because it's... It's not something I've done. And other than G Deep, I don't know of another person who has been successful. Not that they haven't been. I just don't know them. I've not met them. Sandra Bullock. I'm 51 and this is my third go round with keto. I'll be in my fourth month in July and have only lost one pound, LOL. But inches are coming off. I notice weight loss a bit slower than with my first two keto tries. I'm going to assume, Sandra, that you're older than you were the first two times. So that can have an impact. But also, it can depend on how much you you have to lose. Um, and losing inches without losing ounces is a thing. It truly is a thing. Very often, people will realize that their clothes are fitting looser, even though the scale is, you know. And if it bothers you, don't weigh. Are fruits really that bad? Or, or I mean, what fruits are the best? For, uh, they're not bad. They're not evil. They're just full of sugar. Dr. Westman says fruit is nature's candy. So no, no fruit for us. And fruit is not on page four. Everyone needs to do what works for them, but fruit is sugar. So no, we don't eat any. The We have blueberry bushes in our front yard and the ones I've been able to get to before the birds and squirrels and chipmunks, 
Um, I'm keeping them in the fridge, the freezer, and I'll probably throw a handful every now and again into one of my husband's smoothies because cyclists all, also get smoothies. But no. Michelle Brooks writes, I've gained 20 pounds since shoulder surgery. The scale isn't budging. However, I feel great and losing inches. I love keto. And you, thank you. Never quitting. Never need to quit. Never need to quit. Jackie Eberstein's been eating this way since 1974. I appreciate all of you allowing me to be part of your Saturday. Don't forget, Dr. Westman, you can ask the man himself questions. And it's about an hour and a half session. It is live. You can watch it on replay if you can't make it. But the link, and I'll put the link in there again. And it's also, it's on my website as well. You go to my blog. Um, so that's a week from Tuesday. And he really is the expert. I moderate the meetings for him. But he is the, people are asking him questions, not me. All right, friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total, not net. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. But you don't even need a food list. Eat fatty sources of protein. About a cup of non-starchy vegetables a day, maximum, if you want them. About two cups of leafy greens a day, maximum, if you want them. And a couple of ounces of cheese, full-fat dairy. But, you know, things are not unlimited. Mayonnaise, not unlimited. It's like a, two tablespoons or a tablespoon. Heavy cream, same thing, two tablespoons because they're calorically and carb dense. So there you are. Thank you. And maybe next week it'll be better production value because my brand new computer, Oosh, this one is on its last legs. Thank you. And thank you ketogenic from Minnesota for helping out with answering questions. And thank you for answering each other. Thanks. Stay safe. <laughs>